Hello, Infiniteers. I'm back in my Sokovia toy box for the final time, along with Nick Fury, and today I'm going to show you how I created the aerial combat for this toy box. One of the things that I loved about Disney Infinity 3.0 was the ability to finally have aerial dogfights in the toy box against AI-controlled enemies. And if you were not aware of this, you can make a logic connection to the Star Destroyer set piece and uh, have it launch TIE Fighters that you can battle. I've done this in a couple of my videos over the years. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> the TIE Fighters are the only AI-controlled airships that the developers gave us to fight. And that's fine for a Star Wars setting, but I would have loved one or two other options that we could use that would better fit a Marvel or Disney setting, like maybe a fighter jet from the Planes movie, or the Air Pirates from Tailspin, or something. But we don't have that, and that got me thinking, what could we build in the toy box to simulate that? And I did a lot of experimenting, and this is one idea that I came up with. It's very simple, but it works pretty well, as you saw in my playthrough of this toy box back in episode 21. Um, <laughs> and it's not showing me the paths. It's showing some of them. But uh, when you start creating a lot of paths and branches, oh, there it goes. Now it rendered it. Uh, it's, sometimes it'll hide those lines, but um, anyway, uh, what I've done is create some paths in the toy box for objects to fly along. And um, I created these ahead of time because it's a little finicky to set these up and get them looking nice and smooth and so on. And so it took me a little while to do this. What I'll do here is I'll show you the final result that I've got. So to kind of help you start with this, I placed a little building block here in the middle of this street, in the middle of that street, so in this intersection. I had to move these two pieces back to make this fit. This is where I had this originally. And then half a block up is the path creator. You drop that, and then you start dropping points out in this direction. And the first path point that I dropped is right here. And um, you don't have to get this precisely. You just kind of want to get this in the general ballpark, but I'll try to give you a good look at where this is in my toy box. Next path point goes up here. And again, it doesn't have to be too precise. The main thing is you want a nice smooth flow um, so that the paths the lines don't have any weird loops or, or kinks in them. You want it to look like a smooth flight path. And then the next one is over here. <laughs> Just trying to get this selected so it's lined up with the edge of that building. About with the edge of the church there. And it kind of tells you about how high it is. So these are going up off the ground. So basically the paths are set up so that they fly through the streets and then up and over the buildings. So like the uh, planes are strafing the ground. That's kind of the effect that I was going for here. I wanted them to dip up and down and not just fly around in a flat circle above the city. So that was kind of important. And you can kind of pause this at different points like this. And um, when you're trying to figure out where to put this, you can look at the previous path points down there where they're sitting in front of that building. Just kind of get a good idea. And again, it doesn't have to be too precise. You do want to get these uh, paths when you fly out of the street and up and around for another pass. You want to put these up high enough that um, any players that are chasing them in a plane aren't going to run into the buildings. And so that's why I've got these up here. Now obviously if they're flying, chasing it through the street and they're going through that low area down there in the street, then <laughs> they may very well hit buildings, but um, nothing you can do about that. This one's straight across from that other one we just put down. 
and it's at the same height and so is the next one this probably could drop down a little bit or that other one can come up but um, so this is going up a little bit and I'm thinking I might actually pick this up and drop it just a tad just to try to make that look a little bit smoother because you see how it, that previous path point it does like a little loop now that actually looks a little smoother so maybe we want to do that so you can tweak these things like crazy <laughs> spend a lot of time trying to get nice smooth flight paths without little weird hiccups and stuff but this gives you kind of a rough idea of where to put the path points and you'll notice we're coming down now to make another run through the street Next one gets down here. We're kind of just above those buildings now. And that's the last point on the main path. And then I created a branch over here off of this point. It's the first one past the path creator. It's the first point we drop down. And if you aren't sure how to do that, look at the bottom of the menu at the bottom of the screen there and where it says create branch and um, if you're not sure look at toy box tutorials episode 39 I talked all about how to do branches but we created another branch off of here with a path point up here that's directly across from that one at the same height and you'll notice by placing these the way I did it kinda looks like more or less a nice smooth straight line so it's not doing a weird little hiccup when it would take the branch alright so then we're going climbing up but we're going this way around the city this time <laughs> just getting to these path points and kinda see how high up we are we're gonna climb higher still because we're flying, so you want to make use of 3D space here. So that's where that's lined up. That's basically at the same line as the other one there, lined up with that building in the background. Then we go up just a little bit higher. This is the apex of the curve. And kind of about the same height, maybe a little bit higher than the main path over there. The next point is at the same level, straight back from there. You can kind of see where this is placed. And then we start going down. And we want to curve around to try to make another pass into the street. So this gives two options for the aircraft to go. Okay, so you can see where that one's located. It's lined up with that terrain seam and about that height. And you can kind of look at the angle of the path line there. That'll give you a good clue as to where to put the point. This one's lined up with that column of windows again on the same terrain boundary there and the heights just above the building and then we've got a point down in here coming into the street it's lined up with that column of building or windows and then one more little point that kind of helps guide it into almost a straight line into the path point Trying to give you a good look at this, where this is at. And then the last point is as close as we can get to the path creator. And that goes there. So that's our first path. And on the properties for the path, I've already set it. 
So active is on, speed is the maximum of 300. I set the looped flag to close the loop, and these are off. So that's what I've done with that. And then over here I created a second path for a second plane. <coughs> and this little helper block is sitting right in here about like this. Again, the exact placement doesn't matter. The path sits one little uh, nudge above that. And then we build in this direction. So this is right on the seam for, for those uh, blocks over there. You can kind of see how it's lined up with the windows on the building over there. The next one comes up over here. So we're kind of flying towards the church and then going up and to the right of it so we miss it. And there's the height on that. That's the one we branch off of. We'll get to the branch in a moment. The main path curves back around this way. You can kind of see the height on that. And then continuing to climb. Next point is over here. There we go. So you can look at the buildings there and just kind of see terrain seams and such. See exactly where this is located. And at the same height over here a little bit to this side. Kind of lined up with that street down there. Next point starts to go down. So that's lined up like you see. And about at that height. Again, you can kind of look at the angle of that line to see how this is dipping down. And I could have created this path live, but it would have taken a while to get all these points in the places that I wanted them and then tweak the path to make it look nice. And that's <laughs> even as much uh, as this is boring, that's even more boring. And it wouldn't necessarily help you figure out where I placed my points, so I figured this is a little bit more helpful. All right, and that's the last point on the main path. And we set the path properties on this the exact same way as the other one like you see there. And then for the path uh, branch, again we branch off of this point up here and the first point is right over here. That gives you an idea of what the height of this is, but the idea is we want it to look like a straight line coming off of there. So looking at the yellow line past that point we branched off of, um, coming up from the original path point, you can kind of see this looks like a nice continuation off of that. The main path curves off to the left there. And then this one continues up around this way to start branching around towards the helicarrier. And then the next path point trying to show you different angles so that you can kind of see where that point is and the height of it. You can see we're climbing from those last couple of points. And then the apex of this is right up here. We're lined up kind of with the middle of that street. And then we begin dipping down to make a strafing run through that uh, open area down there at the start of this uh, 
level. And I know this is taking a while to show all of these points. I don't really know a better way to do this. If I were actually building this live <laughs> and trying to get these points in the exact same place I have them in my original toy box, this would take even longer than what I'm doing right now. So, all right, so that's lined up there. It's about at the height of the roof of that. Next one is down here, about a block off of the street, lined up with the corner of that building. Next one, right here. Next one, straight up over here off the corner of this last building. So kind of like you see there. And then we climb to this point, which is the apex of the curve. We're out a little ways away from the land over there. This point is, <laughs> if I can get to it, there we go. And then the next point, uh, oops, there we go, middle of that street, about the height of the buildings there on the right, and the last point is right down here. All right, so those are the paths that I've set up. I'm going to go ahead and take these little helper blocks out now. Okay, for the objects on the path, I'm going to use the Nowhere Omni Blaster turret from the Guardians of the Galaxy playset. We're going to put one on this path. We're going to put one on this path. I believed I used, used these things in the Churchill toy box as well. <clears throat> so this first one, we're going to do a new path connection. We're going to connect that up to our first path. And then we're going to set the properties on this. First thing we have is the team. And what you're going to find when this is flying around the toy box, it's not very discriminating what it shoots at. <laughs> So we have enemies on the purple team, we have enemies on the blue team, we have the player on no team, and if you leave this set at none, it's going to shoot at everybody and everything. Um, it's not going to shoot at the canister in the church because it's too far away from that. And it's this particular cannon isn't going to go anywhere near any of the uh, enemy spawning chambers. But it will, if this is uh, still going, when the old church battle happens, enemies will be flying, walking under here, and this will start strafing them because they're on the blue team. So we're going to put this on the blue team, which is the same as the enemies for the old church battle. All right. So any enemies that run through here, this will then leave alone. And again, it's not going to get anywhere near any of the purple enemies. For the path property on this object, we're going to set the speed to be 250. Orient along the path is on. All the rest of these are fine. Now, when it gets to this path point where we branch, if we look at the properties on this, by default we have the weight for the main path and the weight for the branch are set at 100. 
Normally, when I do this, <laughs> in other toy boxes, you've got a 50-50 shot, basically, with this, of it taking either branch, okay? Because that's not a percentage, it's just a weight. And um, what I've noticed in this toy box, though, is that it just either always takes the main path or it always takes the branch. Why it does that, I don't know. It only behaves that way in this toy box. Um, so leave them set at 100, and if you notice it never taking the branch or never taking the main path, you can set both of these to 50. So it'll have a basically a 50-50 shot at either one of these. You shouldn't need to change this, but I had to for my toy box to get this to take one or the other of the branches. Now, when it takes the branch and it comes around over here, this point does not connect up to the main path. And so, as I showed in the branching video in, the, in uh, Toy Box Tutorials, on this last path on the branch, we need to do a new logic connection. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we need to come to the path and connect the triggering actor to the path, which is why the final branch point has to be as close as we can get to the path creator. Okay, so that it looks like a nice, smooth, continuous movement as it rejoins the main path. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with this one. So, new path connection. Connect that up. Now this particular cannon is going to pass over top of this, although it's up pretty high, so it's really not going to shoot at those. But it is going to pass really close to this one. Um, but the player is going to be starting in this area. And as they come out of this area, more than likely they're going to enter the radius around this chamber, and enemies are going to start spawning. So if the cannon happens to fly through here, the fact that it starts shooting, um, it's probably not actually going to hit the enemies, and if it does, it'll just look like friendly fire. So again, these are on the purple team, and these are on the purple team, and they're set that way to leave the canister alone, which is set to the blue team. All of the enemies, um, they're going to be coming through here, or sorry, that's, that's set to the purple team. The enemies that are coming through here for the old church battle are set to the blue team, and this is more than likely going to encounter those. We definitely don't want this shooting those enemies. And so just like the other cannon, we're going to put this one on the blue team. And then we're going to set the same things here. So the speed set at 250. Orient along the path. Then the rest of those properties are fine. And just like before, on the last branch point here, New logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. We want to connect the triggering actor to the path and put that cannon back on the main path. And then the last thing we need to do is come over to our level starter. And when the toy box is loaded, we want to start those paths and start the cannons moving around the paths. Reset and play. And one of the reasons I placed the path creators where I did is that when the player starts on the helicarrier over there, they're not going to see either of those cannons floating in the air as the toy box is finishing loading. The first thing the player is going to see is the cannon swooping up out of the city streets. So this is kind of why I put the start of the paths down here in the streets, as it hides that a little bit. And there we go. It's very simple, but it's effective. And uh, you now have two enemies flying along two paths, and the enemies will shoot back if you get close enough, and the branches make their movement less predictable. If you wanted to, you could even add in another branch or two on each one. Um, you don't really need too much more than this, though. 
Also, the area that they're flying over, the city area, is pretty small. So um, that helps camouflage the fact that these cannons don't have the freedom to fly anywhere they want. Uh, they would naturally limit themselves to flying around the city this way anyway, so that they can strafe townspeople in the streets. So their movement not only looks natural, but it feels pretty natural when you're trying to battle them, either from the ground, shooting up at them, or pursuing them in a jet. So I really like that. And speaking of jets, the player is going to need one. So over here in the uh, helicarrier, I've set up three controls. I put a uh, push button here action button rather, and an action button here, and I place the uh, vehicle summoner <coughs> excuse me, from the gameplay toys drawer right here, and notice which way the Disney Infinity logo is facing. Facing that way, which means the vehicle will spawn facing that direction. And for the vehicle, I'm going to use the Avanjet power disc, but um, you could use anything you wanted. You could use the uh, Starfoil, uh, the Mini Milano, um, anything you like. But I like the Avengers jet. It's called a Quinjet in the movies and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, TV series, but... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Still battling this little bit of cough and gunk in my throat here. All right, so on the vehicle summoner, we're going to set the properties on this. Generated vehicle options. Um, none of these things really matter, so you don't have to worry about those. We'll use this button to generate the vehicle. So a new logic connection when pressed. Come to the vehicle summoner. Go down to the hexagonal power disks and choose the Avenjet, the Avengers jet. And then we'll use this one to take it out. And that'll help us keep the memory low in here. So now we have our flying vehicle. Of course we have this one, but as soon as I take the power disk off the base, that'll disappear. And um, we need a way for the ground-based characters to get over here. Because if they can't fly, <laughs> they have no way to get over here to get to that. So um, under the Creativa Toys, we're going to go pick up the teleporter. And you can place this anywhere you like. If you want to place this up here, you can do that. Because I got the start pad up there, I chose to place mine down here. And you got to orient it like this, because the player is either going to be facing that way or that way when they come off of it. And you have to experiment with that a little bit. And when you place just two of these in here, they'll automatically get linked up. So you don't have to do any logic connections. We're going to place this one right over here. And if we go into spark mode, you can see it automatically created logic connections for those. And so now we just have to determine which way we want to orient those. So if we come over here, that's probably pretty good because we're facing this direction. So that's nice. If we do this though, we're facing out that way and I'd much rather be facing toward the city. So we're going to spin this teleporter around. I'm going to pick it up, and we're going to flip it. And those paths will make things a little difficult with the activity meter to put stuff in here. Okay, so there's the teleporters to get back and forth to the carrier. The last thing we need are the smoke effects. And so I've dropped a effects generator over here ahead of time. And we're going to hook this up to a few locators around the toy box. So the first one we're going to hook up to is this one, and I'm going to reuse 
the locators that I've got just to save some memory. There's really no need to put down any new locators for this. New locator connection will hook up to this one in this street. There we go. New locator connection. We'll hook up to this locator. And it's up to you how many of these you want to hook up. You don't need a lot of them. I wouldn't go crazy with that because it does add to the lag. New locator connection. I'm just going to do four. I think it would be cool having the smoke coming off of this destroyed building kind of indicate it's been recently destroyed. So we'll have some smoke effects here. We'll have them in this street. We'll have them in that street and that alley. I'm not going to put them in that street. I could, but I'm not going to. The idea, though, is, is when you come in over here, you'll have smoke coming off of this street and off of that street. So it'll look pretty good. Uh, if you wanted, you could put uh, some smoke down over this way with a locator or whatever, but I don't think you really need to. And then to start the smoke, we go to the level starter, new logic connection on Catalyze. We go to our effects generator and we're going to play looped out of the smoke category, the large area smoke. And there you go. And so now I had already done this earlier when I came in here, but let's just go ahead and push the button for the level starter. That starts the objects on the paths. That starts the smoke going. Greetings, my tough skin friend. And there goes the cannon. <laughs> so this is looking really, really good. That thing's shooting back. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. And that's it for my Sokovia toy box and this series. I really hope you've enjoyed these Marvel-themed toy boxes. If so, please hit the like button and let me know. Also, let me know what you think of my design for the aerial combat. Next week, we're going back to my Toy Box Racing Series, because I have a new racetrack for you, the Jurassic Classic. I gave you a little preview of this course back in March for my 3,000 subscriber celebration video, and now we're going to build it and race it. So be sure to come back for that, or better yet, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. That's all for me today. Take care.